and fantastic. We are ready to roll. Now, if you haven't already done so, please make sure you sign in with the chat. Uh, just your name and your full-time status is really all I need to pass on for Flex Credit. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. We are 25 strong, and I have some good stuff in store for you. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do two things. First and foremost, I have a little agenda and also some helpful resources and links that accompany this workshop. I am going to copy that and paste it into the chat. Uh, you are welcome to open it up. You are welcome to download it. You can print it out and stick it on your fridge, whatever you wanna do. It's just a Google Doc with some helpful resources for you. And I'm also gonna share my screen on that same document right here. Okay, so today we are talking about, let's make this larger, play posit. And if you have never heard of PlayPosit before, in summary, it is a tool for engaging our students with interactive video content online. Um, I've been using it just this spring semester. We, uh, Long Beach City College got access to it over the winter and I was part of a, a little pilot program the first uh, bit of the semester and I've been using it in my assignments and also my Canvas content pages. So today's workshop is going to introduce you to how PlayPosit can be utilized in your online class. Um, we'll get you started with some techniques. My top advice to you is after this workshop, play around with it a little bit. Uh, test out some different videos, different lengths, maybe a video that you've made, maybe a video that you found off of YouTube that would work in your class. The more time that you spend utilizing PlayPosit, the more comfortable you will become with it in your class. Um, but with that being said, let's dive in. And I did mention in my email announcement for this workshop, um, if you are a hands-on kind of person, if you learn by doing, and if you want to do this step by step with me, uh, please make sure that you have a YouTube video pulled up uh, with accurate closed captions that you would actually utilize in this class. Um, if you just want to sit back, relax, and watch, and then go back and try this on your own later, not a problem at all. Enjoy. But uh, the first about 30, 40 minutes of this workshop is going to be demonstrations. And then the last 20 minutes or so, I'm happy to take questions and maybe we can try out some different things um, and uh, we can walk through it together. So that's what's in store. Let's jump in, okay? Let's go to Canvas. All right, so for demonstration purposes, and I'm just checking the chat real quick. Um, okay, great, great, great. Yes, YouTube, please go to YouTube for those videos. Uh-huh, absolutely. Okay, so for demonstration purposes today, I am going to be utilizing a faculty training course. Um, again, I am using this in my class, but I didn't want to just post student names and scores um, in a recording, uh, but I'd be happy to show you what it looks like in a live class um, after this workshop once the recording has stopped. But for demonstration, I'm going to show you what this looks like in a faculty training course, namely our, our online teaching best practices series. All right. So first things first, we need to find a video. Um, PlayPosit is designed to work very, very well with a YouTube video. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today as we are introduced to this app. So what I'm going to do and, and we've all done this before, we, we go to YouTube, uh, we find something that might work in our class, and then we can utilize it in Canvas in a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna look for something in my linguistic anthropology class. I'm gonna look for bilingualism and the brain. I think I have a video in mind, but I'm also gonna make sure that this video has accurate closed captions. Um, that's a big deal. It's an accessibility feature that we need to do our very, very best to ensure happens in our videos. So I'm actually going to click on filters here. 
and then I'm going to click subtitles and CC. And that way YouTube will filter and only show me videos that have accurate English captions in them. Uh, and the first one is the exact one I'm looking for, The Benefits of the Bilingual Brain by Mia Nakamuli. So I'm going to click on that video to open it up. And I think there's an ad. Of course, there's an ad. Let's skip this ad. I'm not being paid by Rosetta Stone, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video. We don't need to watch it right now, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it here, okay? Then I'm gonna jump over to Canvas. Here we go. All right, so as the outline shows, you can put play pause it video either in a Canvas assignment, and then it will be associated with points, or you can put it in a content page and there it will not be associated with points. I'm gonna show you the first one right now, how to put it into an assignment with points that will then sync to the Canvas gradebook. Let's do that. And here is my method. So I'm gonna to go to modules in my course. You can also click assignments and create it that way. Personally, I like to create assignments right within the module. So that's what I'm demonstrating here. So I'm going to click on the plus sign in my first module. Again, this is just an example. And I'm going to make sure it's an assignment. I'm going to create an assignment. And it's going to do sample, look at that name popping up, sample, play, posit. Add item. Excellent. So now I have my unpublished assignment ready to go in the module. I'm going to click on that assignment. And there's nothing here, that's all right. So I'll click edit. And we will start building out this play posit interactive video assignment. So here's what we do. And by the way, I took a little time before this workshop to write up some ideas. Um, it, it might be something good to think about uh, you doing as well. But whenever I assign a play posit video, I want to provide really, really clear instructions to my students so they know exactly what to do. So again, I wrote this up ahead of time. I'm just pasting it into Canvas. I'm going to make these nice headings. Bada bing, bada boom. And again, this just introduces what the students are supposed to do. I do not recommend just having a floating video on a page because the students might not be clear on what is expected of them to do. Um, also, I encourage you to identify the video length. Okay, this is only five minutes long. Uh, you, you're going to want to identify how many questions and what type of questions are in the video. And you might want to remind them that points will be awarded on any written or typed answers after, they, after the instructor reviews submissions, okay? Because I get questions about that all the time. Hey, uh, professor, my play positive assignment didn't get graded. Well, I, I haven't read it yet, so there are no points yet. Okay, so we have our description, our background, and our task. And then I'm going to assign a point value. Just for demonstration, I'm going to do nice even 10. Excellent. Uh, display graded points, no problem, no problem. OK, now here's the important part. Now I'm going to make it larger. I'm on my Mac. I'm just zooming in. Uh, the submission type, this is the key. Usually we do something like online. And that's fine if they're typing or, or you know something in a text box or uploading. But for play posit, we need to select external tool. And now look at this. We have an external tool option finder. And I'm going to click on the find button. And we have a whole mess of external tools that we can choose from. Some of them are actually really cool if you want to play around with them this summer and see what works for you. But this is the one I'm looking for, play posit. I'm going to click on play posit. And now, K 
Canvas launches the PlayPosit app. So this gray screen has a couple of options for us. Uh, what I'm going to do, because I'm creating something brand new, is click on set link. Because I have a YouTube video that also happens to have a link. So I'm gonna click on set link. Excellent. And in PlayPosit, which is what we have right here, you see some of my old videos as well. Um, every video, every activity that we build in it is called a bulb. You know, it's kind of like a light bulb um, over the head, you know, something to that effect. So what I'm going to do is click add a new bulb. And play pause it launches. And then when you when you launch it, it usually has a little tip like this, which is, you know, that's helpful, but you can click anywhere to enter the designer. All right. So now we are in play pause it. It's pretty nifty and they have various ways to create video content, but keeping things simple. I already have my YouTube video. So I am going to click on input URL. And then I'm gonna switch over to my YouTube video. I'm going to click on the URL. I'm gonna copy that URL, go back to play posit and paste. And now play posit is looking at this video that we got off of YouTube. It imports the title, it has a nice little thumbnail image that students will see. And I already know that it has accurate closed captions, so we're good to go. But let's say I want to have a couple of options here. Um, I could do, for example, by clicking Customize. I'm going to use YouTube captions, but I can say, OK, I only want my students to watch the first, let's, let's say, three minutes. Then I can click on Trim and Crop. And I can click and drag to wherever I want it to stop in a video. And I love this tool. You can even say, I only want it to play from two minutes until three minutes. And so students will only see that one minute section. And again, this is a short video, uh, but I have a couple of like hour and a half documentaries. I only want my students to watch about 10 minutes of it. So that's where this trim and crop tool really comes in handy. But I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to keep it just the entire video for now. Thank you very much. And I'll click done. All right. So now in PlayPosit, we have a few different options for what we can do in the video. And again, this isn't just for students to sit back and watch the video um, and, you know, and do nothing. The goal of Play Posit is to get the students doing something, some sort of active learning while they are, while they are viewing. So Play Posit calls those interactions where students will literally interact with something that we, the professors, place into the video. So I'm gonna click on this bulb, this light bulb, interactions. And they have templates here, which are kind of neat for an example, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and do my own. Um, you can even do one of each interaction, but just to give you a sample, you can get one for learner feedback, where you put a poll question at the end of the bulb for learners to rate their experience. You can do, you could just have a text box pop up in the video where students can type in some notes. Uh, they could even have reflective pause interactions uh, throughout the video. You can put a discussion form in the video. So when students are watching the video, on one side of it, there is a discussion board where they can interact with their classmates and, and professor. But we're keeping things simple. We're introducing the concept. So 
I'm just going to do no template, apply. And here we have kind of a blank slate. OK, so here's what we do. At the bottom of my screen, let me move this up just a smidge. At the bottom of my screen, I have the standard play button. And then also, I can drag this to a certain time of the video. Notice here, let's say I drag it to 22 seconds. Play pause, it's asking me, do I want to add an interaction at 22 seconds? OK, neat. So that's, that's good to know. So what I'm going to do, and again, I took a little time ahead of time before this workshop to come up with a few ideas. I wrote up some questions ahead of time. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can do it too. So this first question, uh, language ability is typically measured in what parts? And I want that question at 40 seconds. So I'm going to fast forward to 40 seconds. Play pause it asks, add an interaction at 40. I'm going to click that blue button. Yes, please. And now we have options. We can do multiple choice free response, a poll, check all, fill in the blank, discussion. We can even do a web embed. If I want my students to go to a website after viewing this part of the video, then I could just put a link right in there for them to click on. We could do vocabulary matching, uh, if, you know, functions table if you're teaching mathematics and so on. But keeping it simple, I'm gonna start with multiple choice. I'm going to click on multiple choice. And then I get to write a question. And this is pretty standard text box, really not that different from using Canvas. So I'm going back to the questions I wrote ahead of time just to make this as speedy as possible. And I'm just pasting things in. In fact, let's just do it this way to be even quicker. Okay, so there's all four choices. There's another choice. And then I need to add answer option. I have another choice. And I have a fourth choice. Okay, excellent. So now I have my question. And I have the four choices that I wrote ahead of time. And I, I even highlighted the correct answers. So you, you, it's everyone's on board with what I'm doing. So the correct answer, talking, writing, listening, and reading, I'm going to select that as the correct answer. OK? And then I have my question and my answer options written. I'm going to click on step two, placement. Where do I want the question to appear at the 40 second mark of the video. I can have it on the side of the video. I can have it blocking half of the video, blocking the right side of the video, or maybe there's maybe you don't want your students to be able to see the video. So you just say, I'm having it completely covering the video. Okay, so let, let's go for that one just to see what it looks like. And then for timing, and we have it at the 40 second mark. So I'm going to click on done. Excellent. All right, so I have my first question ready to go at the 40 second mark. And look, if I move that, you can see it. That little dot right there is that first interaction, that 40 second mark question that I just created. Let's do a second one. Again, practice makes perfect. So I wrote again ahead of time a question for one minute and 12 seconds. So that's where I'm going to go to. Whoops. One minute and 12 seconds. Perfection. And I'm going to click the blue button again to add an interaction at 112. Awesome. Um, let's do you know what, let's do a fill in the blank. I wasn't planning on that, but let's do fill in the blank because I, I like to do that sometimes in my classes. I'll fill in the blank. And let's do this. So I have my question. 
a person who learned Spanish and English simultaneously from childhood. I am putting that right here. And then add input blank. I am going to type in, or in this case, just paste in, compound bilingual. Excellent. And then I can click done. And there you go. So we have the question and then we have what students would be expected to type into the answer and so on. Let's do one more multi-choice and then we'll hop over to an ending short response and then we'll see how this looks on the student side. So I need to go to two minutes and 27 seconds. Right there, add an interaction. Let's do multiple choice. Paste in my question. Okay, excellent, excellent. And then I'm gonna make sure I have all four of my options ready to go. And again, I'm just saving time here. So let's just copy paste them real fast. Critical age period, which happens to be correct. So I'll highlight that now. Critical mass hypothesis, not quite. Oops. Compound bilingual hypothesis. That's actually not a thing in case you're wondering. And then early lateralization hypothesis, not quite. Boom. And this one, just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to put the placements on the right side of the video and the timing is good and I'll click done. Awesome. And then the very last question is a short response where I want students to write a couple of sentences um, answering this following question. So I'm gonna copy my question that I wrote ahead of time and I forgot where I'm gonna, oh, just at the end. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end of the video. Okay, yeah, usually this is Ted Ed, so I'll just do it right here. And then I'll add an interaction at four minutes, 57 seconds. This is gonna be a free response. Click free response. And I'm going to paste my question here. Excellent. Uh, placements, I'll just keep it on the far side. That's fine with me. Timing is good. And then for this one, I'm gonna click on, instead of done, I'm gonna click on customize. Click customize. Then let's see. Okay, so I was gonna make it, no, I'm just gonna make it over here. Okay, customize and then done. Okay, fantastic. Now, I have three multiple choice questions and I have one short answer question. I've selected my correct answers and I have the short answer ready to go. But I have another step. I need to assign points to these questions. Now, Play Posit does this automatically. Um, it will assign, I believe it's one point for a multiple choice question. And I believe three points for an essay question. But you can change that. So I'm going to click these three dots above the first question. And I'll just make it worth two points. Great. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll make all the multiple choice and fill in worth two points. Because remember, I created this assignment out of 10. So I wanna make sure that the points in play posit match the points that I set in Canvas. So this will be worth four points for their writing. Excellent. So now I click review. Again, video segments, interactions, now review. In this, I can set a learning objective. I already wrote that up in Canvas, so I'm not going to put it here. Um, but I am gonna look at playback options. 
I like to toggle these and see what makes the most sense. So let's click on those. And you can set this up in a couple of ways. For example, um, if this is just something for participation, if it's not for a grade, maybe you'd let learners skip the interactions. Um, but for me, for this assignment, I want this, my students to do every single one of them. So I'm gonna keep that unchecked. Um, you can allow learners to retake the bulb upon completion. I'm okay with that. If, if they miss one and wanna try again, fine, no problem. Um, I, don't disable the captions. You want those YouTube uh, closed captions working and then allow learners to increase playback speed. I think you can play it at double speed, um, which is pretty standard for video content. Somebody needs to watch it a little bit faster. And that'll do. I'm going to click on Save Changes. Oh, I missed the dialog box. What did it say? Oh, bulb saved. Excellent. Please close this tab and return to your LMS. Close. Wonderful. And look, now I'm back in the Canvas window. This is just play pause it popping up within it. I have the video bulb that we just created, the benefits of the bilingual brain. To input it into the assignment, you see this circle right here? It says LMS, Learning Management System. I'm gonna click on that circle. Here we go. Learner experience, I'm keeping it self-paced. And I'm gonna click link. Wow, it would make so much sense for this to happen in the middle of a demonstration. So let's go back and see what went wrong. Array to string conversion. I don't know what that means, but let's try again. This happens sometimes with new stuff and we have to roll with it. So let's click play pause again. The good news is the bulb I just created, it's saved. Yeah, I didn't lose any content. So something went a little funny with the link. So I'm gonna enter play pause it. And we're gonna do take two on this. Okay, so again, here's my bulb. I'm gonna click set bulb link. Okay. Cross your fingers, everyone. Ah, look at that. Okay, we got it this time. So now I just click select. Don't click cancel, select. And look, inside that external tool box is the play posit video that I just created. I'm gonna leave everything as is for now. I'm not even gonna put a due date on it. I just wanna click save and publish to see how it looks. All righty. So we have the background and the tasks that I typed up ahead of time. And on the instructor side, this is what we're going to see. We're not actually gonna see the video. We have to click on preview to see the video and that's fine. Um, but I'm actually gonna switch over to the student view so that you are all able to see this from uh, the other side. So let me click on student view. So this is what your students will see. They'll see the background, the task, and the video will just pop up for them and they can press play. Captions are good to go. And I'm just gonna go to the first interaction, which I recall was at 40 seconds, but I can't fast forward. Yep, can't fast forward, so I'll just get through it. Okay. So the video paused, this question popped up and it's asking a question. 
that I wrote ahead of time, uh, I'm going to intentionally get the question wrong. So I'm just going to do uh, right here, and I'll click submit. All right. Oh, I, I missed it. Darn. OK. Oh, well. I'll click continue, and the video will continue. OK? So this is what the process will be like for your students going through your video content. I'm not going to play out the whole thing. Uh, I don't think that's the best use of our time, but maybe I could show you the whole thing a little later if you want to. I'm going to leave the student view. I'm going to leave student view back to instructor view. Now, here's the deal. What happens when you have a class full of 40 students that, uh, that do this activity? Uh, how do you grade it? How does it go to the Canvas gradebook? Well, the secret lies with this button, monitor. Once you have closed that assignment or once it's due, you can click on monitor to launch, play pause it again. But this is just looking at that one bulb that we created, the benefits of the bilingual brain. And look, this is the attempt that I just did a moment ago. It even says test student. Uh, with, with your students, it'll have all the students' names that, 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 that down the list here. Uh, but it will say it was in progress for two minutes. So you can even see, oh my, this student didn't finish the video. Uh, you can see their attempt on the first question. You just click on the question and see how they responded. Um, and, and this happened to me not too long ago. I, I goofed. I made a mistake on what the right answer should have been. So you can even change the points here if you want to, like if, if you goof or if you realize, ah, that wasn't a fair question. Uh, I'm going to award points for that question. So you can award points right here as well. Okay. And then if we had continued on in the student view, we would be able to see the fill in question, the second multiple choice question here, and even the writing prompt here. And the writing prompt, this is where you can click on, for example, grade all. Granted, there's, there's no responses here because this is just a demo, uh, but then you can just go down the list and select one, two, three, four points however many points you want to give uh, based on their response. So once you do that, I'm going to click Save Grades. And I'm going to go back to the benefits of the bilingual brain. OK? This is key right here. These grades that are within PlayPosit do not automatically move to the Canvas gradebook. Rather, it takes a click. Sync grades. It's just like syncing music from your computer to your phone. We have to sync the PlayPosit grades to the Canvas grades. So I'm going to click on Sync grades. Syncing in progress. It's doing its deal. Granted, this is, there's no real students to actually grade. Um, but once you complete that step, it will show you syncing grades complete, and the grades, the points awarded in PlayPosit will automatically be forwarded to the Canvas gradebook. So it's a pretty neat tool. We don't need to go back and forth from gradebook to PlayPosit. We just sync it up um, in this way. Okay. So once I'm done grading, I've synced up, I, I don't need to review anymore. I'm just going to X out. I'm just going to X out of that one, OK? And then let's see. Well, yeah, I, I don't think it went through because it's just the test student, but we can take a glance at it. Test students usually at the bottom. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and there we go. So the sample play posit video synced up, and of course, the student didn't get it right. So it's a zero for me, OK? So again, that is very quick how to begin utilizing PlayPosit in a Canvas assignment. Um, there's a number of steps, as you saw. Again, that's why we're recording this. You can even check out on my agenda and outline. It walks you through this. It has the links and some videos for you here. Um, practice, practice, practice that skill, uh, and it will become more habitual for you. 
Um, the second feature I want to show, and then I just want to move into questions because I, I know there are going to be some. Um, I, I want to show briefly how to use PlayPosit in a Canvas page. In fact, I only now realize I skipped to number three in my agenda, my mistake. I'm just so excited about assignment. But this is a simpler process. So let's go back. And just like creating an assignment, I like to create pages within a module, as opposed to clicking pages and create new. I just like to find the module that I want, click on the plus sign, select page, and create page. Uh, let's see, play, pause it, demo, add item. All right, so I've got my page. I'll click on that page. And there's there's nothing here. So let's edit this up. Let's put something in here. All right. So again, like what I wrote up here, provide some context for the video. Um, provide some context. You know, I'm not going to assign any points to this. This is just for demonstration, or this is just for um, content presentation among my students. So I would put something to this effect, you know, here's what you're about to watch, here's the length. Um, there are embedded questions, but they're not graded, they're just for practice. So that's usually what I write when I do it this way. And then I'm gonna make sure I have my cursor where I want it to be, not like in the middle of a paragraph, I'm gonna put it down here where I'd like the video to be. And then for this content page, I'm going to use my tools up here and go to this one that looks like a plug, All right? That's the app button. Now I'm going to click it and look at that. Play pause is right there. Now it might not be there for you. If not, just click view all and you can locate it. Um, if once you start using play pause it, it will pop up here uh, or it might already be there for you depending on um, where you are. But I'm going to click on play pause it. And one more time, we, we launch the app. I'm just going to go ahead and enter. You, you, can, you can click anywhere. Either one of those, that's fine. And then I'm going to click, I'm going to find the video I want. Or I can add a new bulb, right? Just like I did before earlier in the workshop. But I'm just going to choose the one that we already looked at. And I'm gonna click that magic yellow, orangish <laughs> LMS circle. Click it. Give it a moment. Um, let's see, it's already linked in an assignment. You'll need to unlink it. Oh, you know what? This is a good teaching moment. I forget because I have a couple copies of the same video. If you have something linked in an assignment and you also want to put it in a page, you will have to unlink it from that assignment or make a new copy. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy because maybe I want it in both places. I, I don't know. That's fine by me. And then I'll click on link. And look at that. We have our magic play positive video that's been floated right in. And again, this isn't an assignment, it's just a page. So there's not a whole lot else for us to do. I'm gonna click on publish. And once it loads, here we go. The same look and feel as you had for the assignment. Um, the only difference is when students complete the play posit video within a content page, the points will not move to the grade book. So I do this sometimes just for practice assignments. Uh, I do this sometimes if I have, if I've recorded myself doing something like a 10 minute lesson, I'll put it in play posit solely for the reason that I want to be able to see who watched it. I want to see who watched the whole 10 minutes of it, who stopped around minute three. Um, so I can check in with how those students are progressing in the course. So content page, no points, assignment, 
points. Uh, with that, I want to go back to my overarching recommendation for play posits is to play. <laughs> play with it. Practice with it. Get a couple of short YouTube videos. They don't have to be yourself. They could be just, you know, things that would work in your class, like what I demonstrated here today. And you can get the feel of what it's like to interact with the app, um, this external tool. Um, that being said, so far, my students have had a very positive response to it. When I first started this at the beginning of the semester, they said, that's so cool. How did you do that? Um, because the interactions were, you know, very introductory. I try to make them very fun. Um, so, so it is a very useful tool that I'd encourage you to play with, um, perhaps over the summer, get comfortable with as you roll out your fall online classes. But with that being said, we have, yeah, we have about 15, 20 minutes left, which is just what I wanted. And I'm going to stop my share, check the chat. I know there are questions. I find probably the best way to start with the questions is to use the, the raise hand function just because that moves you to the top of the queue. Um, okay, yeah, excellent, excellent. As I glance at the chat, uh, let's see. Okay, I see a lot of questions in the chat. This is, this is good, this is good. Okay, let's hear from Rosella. And then I'm going to take a chat question. Rosella, please go ahead. Yes. So uh, my question is kind of technical because I'm using, I'm already using PlayPosit. Mm -hmm. So this is because I teach in another community college. So my two questions are this, or maybe we can see that later on. Maybe we can meet personally. My first question, it is, can I use a bulb from my El Camino college to cast to a Long Beach City College, because it looks like I cannot do that. The second question, it is, I also have a personal play posit, like my own individual account, because also I, I do this like external with the other classes. And that is, seems impossible to me. I find, I find, I find, I can find a solution to use my bulb and then uh, to insert in the canvas or Long Beach City College or El Camino College because uh, they were not connected with the grade book. Okay. Let me address your first question. Um, I'm not familiar with the personal account settings from your second question. Um, but the first question, yes, if you have play posit at multiple institutions, you should be able to share bulbs between those institutions. Um, I, I can show you how briefly, again, it's getting a little bit more technical than I'd like to in just an introductory training, but to do so, I'll just show you how to get started. So I have play posit, I clicked on monitor. I am going to just go to my bulbs. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so I have this bulb and let's say I want to share it with a colleague even or another institution where I teach. Well, I can click on actions and I believe I should be able to adjust the settings. Yes, adjust settings and for privacy, you can select that bulb is public or bulb is visible to your institution or bulb is visible to, oh, well, that's the same thing, or bulb is private. If you select that your bulb is public, then you should be able to then, from your other institution's canvas, you can search for the title of your bulb and it should pop up for you. Um, again, that's, that's where I would recommend starting, is just ensuring that the bulbs are public, and then you can look them up from one institution to the, the next institution. So that, that would be my recommendation um, right now. The second question, Rosella, maybe we can connect uh, through email or another time so we can uh, troubleshoot a little bit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. 
Uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking at the chat. Jaime, I saw you had a question. Um, the external tools, they, they were already available. So when you are in Canvas and you select that external tool, then it should be ready to go for you. If it's not, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to the OLED team and we'll make sure that app is good to go. But it should be good to go for every faculty at Long Beach City College. Megan, thank you for the hands, yes. Hi, my question is once I've synced grades for an assignment, if a student does it after that, will I get a notification in Canvas because it's synced as an assignment that it's a late submission? Oh, that's a good question. So Canvas will not notify you because Canvas only knows about the play positive grades once you click that sync grades button. So okay. if you have a student submitting a play posit assignment late, you will have to go into moderate for that individual bulb and then update the student's grade there. Um, okay. So yeah, but that's, that's a really, really good question. Thank you for raising it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm checking the chat again. Lisa, I see you. Is there a way to embed play posit into a quiz? So we can crop the video and then ask comprehension questions. I don't know. I don't know. I'm making a note and Lisa, I will connect with you. I'm writing down your full name. Um, you. Play posit in quiz. I have not tried it that way. I'm just curious and I may have missed this because there was so much great information, but when you were setting up your questions, were you able to change the points or, you know what I mean? Like, could you make one question worth 10 points and another one worth one? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes. Um, I may, maybe once we hit 2.30, I can go back and do a little recap on that for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see. Rachel, I see your question in the chat. Can you type in the exact time marker? Uh, I haven't tried that. I, I'll give it a shot. I, I just drag it to, and what I usually do, honestly, Rachel, you know, um, I had questions pre-written ahead of time for this workshop today. Usually when I'm doing this in my class, I just watch the video and I'm like, okay, pause. I'm gonna write a question right there. Um, so that's, that's typically how it works when I'm doing this in a live class. The questions, Hiromi, let's see, can you choose to give multiple attempts on an embedded quiz? Um, are, are you referring to a play posit video? Um, and yes, you can absolutely give multiple attempts on that. Um, I, I think I had that set up. I can go back and show you how Hiromi did I, uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's it. I was wondering, okay. you know, if you uh, on the canvas quiz, I would normally give multiple attempts. Um, and I would like to do that same using mm -hmm. uh, play posit. I was wondering if I, we could do that. So yes, okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think I had that set up when I did the demo. Let me see, I'll go back and share my screen, just to verify. Um, because yeah, a lot of times I want my students to take it more than once, you know, especially if they don't do well the first time. Uh, yeah, so Hiromi, it's right here in the final tab or in the settings. Just check allow learners to retake the bulb upon completion. And, and they can take it again and again and again. I, I had a student take one like four times until oh, they got um, all the questions right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is when they complete the entire video. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. How about like so when you know um, the video pauses when the uh, question pops up and they you know uh, they answer yes or multiple choice question and they you got it wrong and then uh, your demonstration showed that if you answered you know uh, wrong it, sh it shows it's incorrect and it shows you the correct answer right away but mm -hmm. instead of showing the right answer right away um, can can we choose can we give them multiple attempts like can they take the quiz right away, like maybe three see. times or something? I see. Yes, I understand now. Thank you for clarifying. Um, let's edit our settings on the video we were just working on, okay? 
Let's take a look at that because you, you raise a good point. Maybe you don't want to just hand them the correct answer. Uh, you want them to try again until they get it on their own. I, I see that. That makes sense. So I'm back in our editor. Okay. Now I'm going to, I have a question. I'm going to select the options here. And let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. I'm not going to edit the question. That's not what I want to do. No, no, no. You know what, Hiromi, you raised an excellent question and I'm clicking advanced. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Under advanced, hide correct answer if not selected. So that should, that, that will tell the student that they are incorrect but it will not give them the correct answer. Right. Do we also have to click um, allow, allow more than one attempt? I believe that's just for this one question. Right, so that if, one question. Oh, okay, yeah. So if you want them to go back immediately and just answer that one right. question, absolutely. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Perfect. can say I want them to try it 10 times. <laughs> that's fine. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the question. Again, <laughs> I am still learning some of the more advanced settings on PlayPod. Um, it takes time and I've been using it for a couple of months now, but this is good. This is helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Check in the chat. Check in the chat. Um, okay, Megan, I saw yours. Let's see. When it showed grades and other students' names popped up with scores, um, was that technically a FERPA issue? Um, Larry, I was using a faculty um, training course, so those were not Long Beach City College students. Those are actually Long Beach City College faculty. Um, so we're good to go on FERPA. Let's see, Leslie, does Canvas notify faculty that a play positive assignment needs to be graded? Uh, so that, that makes me think of Megan's question as well. Um, yeah it will not appear in your to do like a typical canvas assignment would leslie so it's something that i go back to so if i have if i have a play positive assignment due on a sunday a sunday night um, i'll check those submissions maybe two or three times that week to see if, if somebody submitted a little bit later um, and, and usually for my students, if they don't get a grade on something that they did, I get a message about it. So that, that's one thing you might want to encourage as well. Uh, just remind them, check their grade book. If you did something and don't have a grade, please let me know. Um, Paulette, I see your hand. Please go ahead. <laughs> I couldn't get it unmuted. Oh, dear. Um, did, um, I understand that the students are going to see their grades once you sync it in Canvas. Do they know what their grade is when they finish it? And, or do they know what their grade is before you sync it? You know, that depends on the type of questions you ask. If it's all multiple choice, then yes, that automatic feedback um, because it's graded automatically. If there are short answer questions, then only the multiple choice grade will show up. So the quiz that I just demonstrated for you all, it had um, six points, multiple choice, and four points of short answer. Once students finish that quiz, finish the play posit bulb, um, they might see six out of 10. And I, I'll tell you, my students have asked, Professor, why did I only get six out of 10? And I always remind them because I haven't graded the short answer portion yet. So, so that's, uh, that's how it's going to look on their end. They'll be able to see how they performed um, on multiple choice or fill in, things like that. Okay, let's see. Uh, Larry, if you just want to see if they watched a percentage of the video, then you put it in play pause it without any questions. Can you just use it that way to monitor how much they, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Larry. Uh, I use it like that myself. I'll post, uh, again, a short video, maybe 10 minutes of myself introducing a topic. 
And, and I just want to take a peek and see who's seen it and how long did they watch it for? So, um, that, and that's a perfectly good way, I think, to get comfortable with play posit. You don't have to get fancy with questions and, and discussions. Just put them in, play posit. You can check, click monitor and see who's watched it. That's a good deal, yeah. Uh, Paulette, did, did you re-raise your hand or, or is that just from earlier? Oh, it's earlier. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, no, no problem, no problem. Any other? And, and I know that it's it's like there's so much you can do. Um, it, it's okay not to have the questions now. You can always reach out to me if something kind of pops up, and, and I'll work with you to troubleshoot it. Becky, yes. <laughs> um, the uh, this event is tomorrow. Is it similar to what you're do doing right now tomorrow morning? There's a flex thing about this tomorrow also. There is. I know nothing about that. Oh, okay. No. Because okay. um, I missed the first, I was at another flex thing for the first half of it, so. Oh, um, so who, can, who's, can, who's facilitating tomorrow's? Uh, I'll look it up. Um, oh, okay, just it, let me know, it's not me. Okay, and then is it the, um, can't you follow the people's viewing uh, in other ways other than this play posit? If you have stuff on YouTube, can't you still follow it in other ways? Uh, you know, uh, you, you can do it in Canvas Studio. Absolutely. If, you, if you're comfortable with Canvas Studio, and that's fine. Um, I have moved away from Canvas Studio just because I find Play Posits interface makes a bit more sense. Okay. But you, you cannot just post a YouTube video in Canvas um, as a standalone video, and you just you can't see who's seen it. Uh, or not. Um, and you can't really follow it on YouTube either because that's an accumulative, right? Not per That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just clicked the event. It's at from 10 to 1130 and it's a, just a, it's a Zoom link. So it's not showing anybody. Oh. I'm on okay. the, the homepage, the PDF. I was planning on going to it because since I missed the first half. Oh, okay. I'll take a look. That, that's probably an error, but I'll take a look um, and, and clarify. Okay. Thanks for raising it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Are, um, and then Gary, there's more next week. The same, the sixth, the seventh. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's, a tech, maybe, maybe it's a tech connect error. I'll, I'll look into it and make it right. Thanks for uh, bringing it to my attention. You bet. Um, Gary, YouTube is, I find the easiest way. You can also use uh, 3C Media. You can use Vimeo. Um, so there are different options there. Unfortunately, at this time, we cannot use a Zoom link. And I wish we could, because then I would just take a Zoom link and put it right in the play posit. Um, mm -hmm. So there's some extra steps entailed there. It's a little cumbersome, but um, maybe down the road, we'll get uh, a license for Zoom and play posit to get along. That would be helpful. Otherwise, I have to uh, learn how to do it in YouTube, which I don't know how yet. Okay, I understand. Oh, well. And, and I, I, I do have some uh, pre-recorded tutorials on how to get your content onto YouTube. If anybody wants that, just email me. I will be happy to send you um, that tutorial video. If, if you want to start learning how to use YouTube in your class, I, I'm happy to uh, help you out. Um, let's look at that, 231, not bad. Uh, this was good, this was good. And uh, thank you, Leslie, for the comment. I appreciate it. And again, I, before we go, I am not the type of instructor that likes to throw unnecessary technology at students or my colleagues. But if you feel that you're ready to start playing around with play posit, um, then I, I'm here to support you um, in whatever way that you need. So with that being said, let me put the agenda back into the chat just in case anybody arrived a minute late and didn't get it. Uh, there are some good links and resources here. Copy that link. Hey, um, Michael, is, is this going to be recorded that I could watch the first half? This is recording right now. 
Yes. No, I, I see it's recording, but is it going to be posted so I can have access to it? Yes, I'm going to put it on the FPD Canvas shell probably early next week. I'll need to revise the closed caption. Um, but you can always email me over the weekends and I'll just get you the link um, that way if you want it faster. Super. Thank you. No problem. I'm going to stop the recording actually. So let's go ahead and do that.